Good evening. I'm Deaconess Catherine Insera, a member of the Park Ridge Ministerial Association as the manager of faith and community relations for Kids Above All, formerly ChildServe. We are a child welfare agency spanning Chicagoland and serving for over 126 years. I'm delighted to welcome you to this online community Thanksgiving service. It's our first time being online, but we are indeed in community. And the Park Ridge Ministerial Association is so grateful that you chose to attend this service this evening because we are a group of faith leaders serving the community and living in the community, building bridges and resources for the Park Ridge community. Our service this evening will include special music, a time of prayer, an invitation to support the Sunday night suppers, and a special message from Reverend Josh Erickson, the senior pastor at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. For you to write a check to support the Sunday night suppers, please make it payable to the Park Ridge Presbyterian Church and mail it to 1300, that's 1300 West Crescent, Park Ridge, Illinois, 6 zero zero six eight thank you we're grateful and glad that you are joining us for this community thanksgiving service and now for a word of prayer to bless our gathering pray with me please merciful and generous god we gather together with deepening gratitude for the blessings in our lives that fortify us as we face our way forward. Crack open the doors of our hearts and mind. Keep them ajar at minimum, so we might welcome in a renewed spirit of hope and courage for these times. Holy One, abide generously with us as only you do so well. And marking this time with the makings of justice, love, gratitude and your eternal light. We pray this in Jesus' name and the people say, Amen. Welcome.
be in a spirit of prayer as we confess to our Lord and receive God's pardon. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather today rich in blessing, somehow believing that we merit the wealth and comforts that we enjoy. Forgive us, our God, for comfortably closing our eyes to the faces of the poor that stare blankly in our direction. Holy One, have mercy on us. With stomachs full of satisfying food, we offer token gestures to the hungry in our world, and we feel we have done enough. Forgive us, God, for keeping a distance between us and them, for closing our ears to the cries of the hungry. Holy One, have mercy on us. With hands tightly clasping our treasures on earth, we cannot reach out to our oppressed brothers and sisters around this world. Forgive us for clinging to our own possessions rather than to you, O God, our holy provider. Unite us with hearts of thanksgiving that we may work to ensure freedom and justice for all. Holy One, have mercy on us. In silence, we offer these confessions to you, O holy God. Hear now what our God has to say to all people. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those who repent of their sins. May our hearts be tuned for rejoicing in the one who brings us our salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. We do want to take a moment in this Thanksgiving service to pause to remember all those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. With over a quarter of a million Americans and over a million people worldwide having lost their lives, we pause tonight to remember their losses. We also are mindful of those who will have medical challenges going forward, and we pray for them. We pray also over the medical community and first responders who continue to keep us safe at this time, and we pray a safety prayer over them. So I ask that you take a moment in this time to remember those people that we have just mentioned. Thank you. Dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate Thanksgiving Day, let us open our hearts in thanks to God for the favors showered upon us. St. Paul teaches us to give thanks to God the Father always through Christ in whom he has given us everything. For when we became God's children in Christ, God gave us the riches of his grace, rescuing us from the powers of darkness and bringing us into the kingdom of his beloved Son. The heavens declare the glory of God, our Almighty Father, and every creature he has made extols his goodness. Mindful of our indebtedness, let us together with praise and thanksgiving call upon him, saying, Glory to you, O Lord. Father most generous in Christ Jesus, your Son, you have given us all things. Grant that we may never fail to sing your praises. Glory to you, O Lord. Your loving response far exceeds the merits and expectations of those who pray to you. Grant that with our lips and our hearts we may sing the wonders of your works. Glory to you, O Lord. You have told your disciples to share what they have with others. Grant that our neighbors may share in your gifts to us, so that they may also share in our joy. Glory to you, O Lord. You prepare and bestow upon us countless signs of your love. Grant that as we receive your gifts, we may always see you as the giver. Glory to you, O Lord. You have brought us into this great nation and have blessed this land. As we enjoy your blessings, we gratefully remember our ancestors, 
and all those who continue to make our nation the beacon on the hill. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Almighty Father, your Son Jesus spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers as they fashioned a nation where we might live as one. His message lives on in our midst as our task for today and as a promise for tomorrow. As we gratefully acknowledge your bounty towards us, may we recognize our common humanity and work together to build these United States of America into one nation under God, ensuring liberty and justice for all. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of everyone with Sunday Night Suppers, we want to say thank you for your continued support, your generosity, for signing up to sponsor a meal, for coming to serve with us on a Sunday night, and for the offering, the gifts shared through this service that will be shared with Sunday Night Suppers. Like everything, with 2020 and the impact of the pandemic, a lot has changed with Sunday Night Suppers. We can't wait to be back in our dining room sharing a meal, no questions asked, around the table. We know that God does something amazing on Sunday nights when we're gathered that way. And while we look forward to that time, we are so grateful that we've been able to continue to share a meal, no questions asked, in this new curbside model. God is continuing to work through the ministry of Sunday Night Suppers, and we are so grateful for the ways that this community continues to rally around and participate in this ministry. The offering from this service will be shared with Sunday Night Suppers. If you use a mobile banking app, you can search for giving at parkridgepresby.org and choose Park Ridge Presbyterian Church as the recipient and make sure you put Sunday Night Suppers in the memo line. You can also send checks uh, made out to Park Ridge Presbyterian Church with Sunday Suppers in the memo line, or you can bring cash to the main office in an envelope if it's marked for Sunday Suppers, and you can do that Monday through Friday during normal business hours. We really encourage everyone to reflect on all that you're grateful for in this season and allow God to inspire generosity in your life through sharing your gifts with others and at this time with Sunday Night Suppers. Let's take a moment to pray, to thank God for all that we've been given. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are so grateful that you have called us and our community to the ministry of Sunday Night Suppers. We lift up to you all of the guests who continue to meet us on Sunday nights for a curbside meal, shared no questions asked. We lift up to you those guests who are unable to get out to receive this meal, and we do pray that they are provided for, that their needs are provided for in other ways. God, we ask that you would inspire generosity among each of us, sharing what we have with those in need. God, we ask that your spirit would always lead us and inspire us to live more generous lives. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading for today is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Well, first it was Easter, and then it was Mother's Day, then Memorial Day, then we had Father's Day and Fourth of July, and then Labor Day, and then it was Halloween, and now we're staring down uh, Thanksgiving. Seemingly all of the holidays of 2020 have been changed by COVID-19. And the fact of the matter is there's nothing we can really do about that because we can't go into the past and change things. We can't ever really go back into the past and change things. But we can learn from the past so that the sins of the past are not revisited on the future. In this year that we've had, the challenges that have been facing our world and our culture and society have been laid bare. There are many breaches in the wall, as it were, that have been made bare and laid bare. Now, there are some people who are seeing these things for the first time. There are some, like myself, who are seeing them in a deeper way. And there are some who have been calling attention to these breaches for a very long time. But what is also true for all of us is that 2020 has laid bare the breaches in the wall. And our goal is to go forward into a future where these breaches aren't there anymore. Now, until we can go backwards in time, and according to the movies, we either need Doc Brown or Tony Stark, or to the literature, uh, H.G. Wells needs to show up with his time machine, we have only one choice, which is to go forward. And of course, into the future is where we go, and we want to make sure that we redeem the past, especially have our sins redeemed, so that we can have the future that God wants for us. Now, this challenge of being able to and needing to redeem the past and to prepare the breaches in the wall isn't a new one for us in any ways. And in fact, actually, when we look at the prophetic words of the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, a section of scripture that we know Jesus was very familiar with, we hear all about the kind of work that needs to be done to repair the breaches. The prophet in Isaiah speaks to us about the challenges they were facing then. Well, they were very similar. There were things like people not having enough water, not enough food, people that were unprotected because they were vulnerable. And all these things were happening. And when those breaches were then repaired, that is what God wanted for the people then. And that's what God wants for us now. After we have repaired the breaches, then this is what will be said of us. Your ancient ruins will be rebuilt. You will rise up the foundations of many generations. You will be called repairers of the breach the restorer of the streets to live in. And if there's anything we know about the time to come, is that there will be streets that need to be repaired and breaches that need to be repaired. Now, as followers of Jesus and simply as decent human beings, regardless of your opinion of Jesus, we know that we want to be fixing the problems that we have become so aware of in the time to come. And I know many of you are already doing what you can in this time to repair those breaches. The common ministry that we all share through our Park Ridge churches is just astounding. But there's something unique about this particular moment that we find ourselves in, and that is over the last few weeks, we have received encouragement about the state of the pandemic. With the news about vaccines and other treatments, we get a sense that we have a finish line finally in sight. And that is something to be thankful and very grateful for in this season. But what that also means is that we have a sense that this is coming to a close. And we have a sense that we are going to find our way forward. Maybe it's that new normal we keep talking about. Maybe it's the way in which we're going to live differently that we're thinking about. But the challenge in this very moment is to make sure that we reflect on what we have learned so that we do not waste what has happened in 2020. There have been so many sacrifices. There have been so many losses. There have been ways that our world has been irreparably changed. And if we do not reflect and learn from these experiences, we will perhaps waste these. The sacrifices and the losses will be more in vain than we care to admit. And so in this unique moment, we have an opportunity to reflect, 
to learn from what has gone on, and to go forward. Now, we're also in a weird opportunity that this time of reflection is one of the best things that we can do. For the most part, we know that people are doing what can be done in this season. And we're in a unique season for when it comes to being just, where doing nothing and staying home is one of the most just things that we can do. But there will be a time coming when we are going to want to then do the work of repairing the breaches, to fix the walls, the walls that protect, not the walls that separate, and to find the ways that the breaches and the dams can be then repaired as well. And in this time, we want to reflect on these things. The great Greek philosopher Socrates said that an unexamined life is one that is not worth living. So in this time, I want to encourage all of us to take some time and to take some effort to reflect on 2020 so that we can learn how we want to be different in the future that we have. And to help us do this, I want to offer us four questions that we can ask ourselves so that we can do better to learn and reflect. Because reflection, when we do it the right way, can lead to better action. Rarely, though not never, But rarely, if we just move on forward without reflecting, will we get the right actions ahead of us? We know that those who are committed to learning from the mistakes of the past do better to not repeat them in the future. With this extra discretionary time that we have on our hands these days, I want to encourage you to take out a piece of paper or a journal if you do that, open a doc in Word or Google, open a note on your phone, or make a voice recording or a video recording uh, to answer the four questions. And you don't have to write them down right now. Uh, I have sent these questions to your pastors or ministry leaders, and so if you're interested in those, uh, you can get them sent to you, or you can find them in the notes on this video. So here's the first question. The first question is this. What am I grateful for? What? You didn't think you were going to get a Thanksgiving message without being asked to consider what you are grateful for or what you are thankful for. Did you? Now, in all sincerity, there is a lot to be grateful for in this time. There is a lot to lament as well, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But the reality is that for many of us, we have a lot to be grateful for. Now, when you reflect on what you could be grateful for at this time, you might find yourself noting uh, the loss of certain things. And for many of us, those losses are temporary, and we can look ahead to the next season of holidays uh, to find ourselves looking forward to that. But we still have much to be grateful for in this time, especially many of us who claim churches in Park Ridge to be our home churches. So consider what you're grateful for. Also in doing that, you'll realize what great blessings you have. Uh, And it is always a wise thing to count your blessings to understand how good we have it. It helps us to stay away from the comparison trap. It helps us to avoid eventually knowing that we can't keep up with the Joneses as if we know what the Joneses are up to anymore right now. But you know, if we can count our blessings, we will know how much we have, and we will not strive for more than we need. So thinking about that first thing, what am I grateful for, can be a first step in reflecting and finding the value in what's happening in 2020 to teach us about what to be grateful for in the future. But I'm also mindful that there are some people who have suffered and are suffering deeply in this time. And if you are suffering in 2020 in a real way, then this is a season where we want you to think about understanding that this is a time to lament. This is a time to grieve. This is a time to not put a Pollyannic covering over things, but to know what's going on in your heart. And if you have a struggle in that way, I encourage you to reach out to someone to help you, a mental health professional, a pastoral ministry leader, so we can get through this together. The second question is, what have I learned this year? It is really important for all of us to consider what we have learned in 2020 so that we can learn, make a list of the lessons learned about ourselves, about our community, about our nation, about our world, any of those things. When we reflect on those things, then we find our way forward into the way that God wants us to live in the future. So if you can make a list of those things you've learned, then you can have a list of things to work for toward in the future. The third question is, what is the breach that I have seen laid bare that I want to do something about? 
we have seen so many ways in which the breaches have been laid bare in our world in 2020. We have seen how we are interconnected as a global community like never before. We have seen how the evils of racism have reared its ugly head again. We have seen ways in which the promise of impending climate change has been on the forefront. All of these things and more have been brought to bear. We know that while we have been making progress on reducing global poverty, that a pandemic and a financial crisis is going to set people back in the developing nations around the world. I don't know which one of these things tugs at your heart, but I'm guessing one of those does. And I wanna encourage you to listen to that part of your heart that is directing you to understand which one of the crises, which one of the breaches that you feel called to address when the time comes. This is a way that we can figure out what is moving in our hearts. I love how some pastors say, ask the question, what breaks your heart? There's probably been something throughout this year that has broken your heart, and that probably is the crisis and the breach that you want to pay attention to going forward. And the fourth and final question is, what is my plan to make a difference with this breach? And here's the opportunity to really dig in in a new way with this discretionary time we've got on our hands, at least many of us do. You have an opportunity to learn more about these breaches. You have an opportunity to research. You have an opportunity to find partner organizations. You have an opportunity to start doing some work with them, probably digitally. Of course, there's a chance to give financially, probably to many of them. But in this time, you can make a plan for how you want to address these breaches when the time comes. So knowing what I know about many of you, I think that you are probably already doing something or many things to help restore these breaches. But I also know that this is a unique time in our history that we can actually be ready to repair the breaches in the future. There is a time coming when it's going to be an all hands on deck, an all skate as it were, when all of us are going to need to be a part of redeeming and restoring the breaches that we have seen in new ways in 2020. And I want us to be ready to respond to those breaches when the times come. So in this time where doing nothing can be the most just thing, also take a chance to reflect on what you might be doing in the future to help repair these breaches. Take some time to reflect, create a plan that is gonna help you move forward. Because when we move forward to repair the breaches, we then are doing the work God wants us to do, and we're helping the world become the just community that God wants it to be for all people. So let us take time to reflect, to prepare ourselves for action, so that when the time comes, we are ready to repair the breaches. Amen.
Before we close, I want to say thank you uh, to everyone who contributed to our worship service today. Thank you for all of my friends and partners in ministry that submitted video recordings to help share in this lovely time we've had together. I want to say thank you also uh, to the whole Park Ridge Ministerial Association, uh, to every ministry leader who serves or lives in Park Ridge that is a part of our fellowship. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you to all of the churches and ministries and organizations that contribute to help make God's plan for this world become a reality where all people can live in a just and loving society. Thank you to one and all, and I wish you the best in this Thanksgiving and Christmas season to come. On behalf of the Park Ridge Ministerial Association, thank you for joining with us in a time of worship. It is a gift to gather and join our hearts. Even when we cannot join physically together in person, you have gifted this community by joining in worship today. Receive this blessing and benediction as you go forth. Go into all the world to live out a spirit of thankfulness, giving thanks for the abundance of blessings we have and sharing them with all those to whom God has called us. Go to love God and to love our neighbors. Amen.